Benedict Wanner. He studied chemistry at the University of Würzburg in Germany and obtained his master's degree in chemistry from ETH in Zurich and Switzerland. He graduated from ETH in the group of Professor Bode and started developing simple chems technology during the time as a PhD student. For um, this business idea, he was awarded with the ETH Pioneer Fellowship for the development of the idea into a viable product. Since the company um, was founded in 2016, he's serving as a CEO and co-founder of Simple Chem. So um, I leave the stage to Benedict to introduce us to such an interesting product. Yeah, thank you, Christina, for the introduction. Uh, let me know if, if something doesn't work, but uh, yeah. Um, also, thank you for the opportunity to present our technology today in the next 10 minutes. Uh, very easy to use automated synthesis system. Um, and I will also show you some fresh results for hit compounds that we made with this technology. So in the recent years, there has been quite a growing drive and interest towards automating chemical synthesis because it has a potential to increase safety and efficiency and output of chemists and at the same time lowering costs uh, in comparison to traditional synthesis. The current approaches towards automating chemistry focus mainly on flow chemistry on the one hand and on the other hand robotic systems based on liquid handlers and 96 well plates. But if it has such a potential of these systems, why are they not already being used everywhere or what is holding us back? One main point is that available technologies are still limited to specialist groups due to their cost and complexity of use. It requires expertise in software, engineering and electronics to run robotic systems. Uh, therefore, the traditionally trained chemist is typically quite restricted in their access to automated technologies, especially for the discovery chemistry. The main driver is often just making new compounds for testing as quickly as possible. So with the exception of the specialist technology groups, most of the chemists working in this field, they don't even have the time to spend programming, optimizing um, and fixing machines for every new reactions they do. Therefore, our goal was to bring a technology to them that was incredibly easy to use, requires no programming, and offers the ability to do the reactions they routinely use, but in a fully automated way. So SimpleChem has developed a fully automated synthesizer based on disposable reagent cartridges that works similar to well-known coffee capsule system. The technology consists of the machine hardware and pre-programmed reaction protocols, plus the reagent cartridge that come pre-filled with all the reagents necessary for a particular reaction. It's similar to the coffee powder in coffee capsules. The user simply then inserts the starting material he would like to transform, then a disposable single-use reagent cartridge for the desired reaction. And upon the push of one button, the machine carries out the chemical reaction to generate the isolated compound in a very short time, safe and convenient manner. The setup will only take less than 10 minutes and is run, then running completely by itself allowing the researcher to focus on his other work. Um, on our homepage, there are a few videos of the reaction setup. So if you can have a look how the reaction is, uh, how the reaction is set up and works in more detail. After the reaction, then the user can just pick up the product, which be in, will be in solution in the reaction vial. Uh, as well as the time saving and the resulting cost saving, the fact that the methods are highly optimized means less materials are used and less space is also generated. And from a user perspective, you just basically plug in the machine into the power and then it's super easy to use from there directly. So it gives easy access to molecules and chemistry automation technologies without any requirement for specialist training in programming, engineering or automation. And it also provides a much safer option since all the chemicals are contained within the cartridge and uh, the machine setup. We are constantly stepwise expanding the range of available chemical transformations that we have. And we have about now three to five new ones every year. And here on the slide, you can see the applications that are available now in cartridge form. They range from more standard organic reactions like heterocycle formation, mid-synopo reactions, uh, reductive aminations of, of fluorinations to also hot applications like cartridges for, for protect formations, for example. 
Also, you can see our existing and upcoming applications on our homepage or send me an email if you have any questions. Um, now I would like to give you a quick example on how the technology works and I'll just talk you through two of our current applications. Um, for the n heterocycle formation, you can easily convert aldehydes in the corresponding n heterocycles by, uh, we have, and we have now about seven different cartridges available for, for heterocycles ranging from simple morpholins or substituted morpholins to seven membered rings. Uh, to enable this transformation, the cartridges have four compartments. And for this application, we have encapsulated the organotin reagents as a solid form within the first compartment, then also have a copper catalyst required for this reaction, and some silica and a catch and release resin for a simple workup and purification. During the process and during the reaction, the instrument basically pumps the reaction liquid through the individual compartments of the cartridge for, for roughly five to seven hours, depending on the heterocycle, to, to carry out the conversion. In the second example, the reductive amination reaction class, the user can actually choose both the aldehyde and the amine. Um, we packed in the cartridge some solid supporting reducing agent and an acid to facilitate the reduction. Also, we have two scavengers where we can capture any unwanted products or starting materials. The substrate scope for the reductive amination is quite big and we obtain high yields comparable to batch reaction and also high purity. And the example substrates here on the right, you can have, you can see you have many different functional groups that can also be functionalized in the next step later. Also the substrates go for other reactions you can find on our homepage and on the application notes, which are available there. Um, so in the second part of the talk, I would actually like to focus on expanding the, the idea a bit more away from just the machine and one cartridge to an application example. We have now a range of cartridges or reactions available. And just like in the lab for multi-step synthesis, you can, of course, run different transformations sequentially on the machine and make the types of molecules that you would need completely on this platform. Um, yeah, so we wanted to show you how the simple machine could be applied to run a lead finding project and to do this with basically very little amount of hands-on work. For that, I would like to first address that the device is actually not a high throughput device, which just makes millions of, of compounds and screens them like in a robotic system. But blindly making and screening everything possible isn't really necessary and desired anymore today in this world anymore anyway. So in this example, what we did, we took two cartridge types, the heterocycle formation one, um, which makes the heterocycle and directly an acetal deprotection. And then we directly afterwards run a reductive amination with another cartridge. And with this, we could now technically just blindly make a lot of compounds and, and screen them. But instead, what we did is we created first a virtual library with all um, types of different possible products you could make from commercially available aldehydes, amines, and two cartridges. So by calculating this library, this gave us uh, the virtual library of about 460,000 compounds, which were then in silico screened against, uh, um, in this case, the SARS-CoV-2 virus uh, main protease. And then after this in silico screening, we got a set of virtual hits or, or pre-selected compounds that are all more or less guaranteed that we can make them on the simple machine with not more than 10 minutes hands-on work time per compound. Uh, since 23,000 was still a bit too much to make, we filtered that down um, to a, a bit more and we selected then 30 compounds to make. And here you can see a selection of 15 compounds that we made and the yields are ranging somewhere between 20 to 40% over two steps for this quite uh, nice looking molecules. And in terms of yields and amounts, the aim here was just to get some material as fast as possible and then do the biological testing to confirm the results from the in silico screening. And for this, we had several uh, devices running in parallel. So you can obtain these compounds just within a few days. And there is no more hidden working time where you first need to program a robot over several days. 
by the way, this library is also available for download on our homepage soon, or just send me a message and then you can get it already before. And you could technically also use it for your own virtual screening and see what uh, against the target of your choice. Um, once we had these kind of compounds, we submitted them for biological testing. And I can't really disclose yet the, which structures we had at the end, but we're really excited to see a really good activity for some compounds in the phenotypic screen against the main protease of SARS-CoV-2 in the cellular assay. And we only had 30% of compounds which are actually non-active. Um, you can see the positive control, which is a kinazarin, which um, is a covalent binder. So compared to our, our compounds, which are non-covalent binders, um, they, they actually perform pretty well. Um, so you can see that the technology uh, uh, yeah, really brings some efficiency to synthesis. And the brilliant thing is that we did most of this work during March and April, when we had to work in two shifts. Um, so even though the chemists were not that much in the lab, we actually got a lot of work done. Um, so currently there's more detailed screening for the binding affinity running, and we hope to get some results soon and can publish and, and share that with you as well. And this was just a nice example of the potential applications, but there are many more, and uh, we would be happy to discuss the potential applications in your lab as well. Uh, so you can also visit our homepage um, where we have a few videos, how the device works, some application notes to download to give you a lot of details and a good overview of the capability of the instrument. Um, so I would like to thank you for your time.